test the Dynamics GP Blogster here. Over a year ago, I actually created a video where I showed you how to leverage some of the Power Apps build components, at least how to get started, how to find information regarding those build components, and how you could probably use them in your ALM or application lifecycle management process. I think most of you came back to me and said, hey, we would actually like you to show us exactly how to use those tools. And this is what this series of videos is going gonna, is gonna to do. I'm going to do a three-part series, I should say, of uh, videos showing you how to get started with some prerequisites, then how to move into the development process, and then how to actually use and set up a build pipeline using Azure DevOps as the um, primary tool for application lifecycle management. So let's just stay tuned and let's see how it's done. So today we'll be talking about the prerequisites. So the first thing you have to do is have access obviously to the admin, uh, the, the Power Platform Admin Center, where you can set up your environment. The first one I'm gonna set up then is a dev environment. You'll probably need a staging or QA environment, and you certainly are gonna need a production environment. So this is what we'll simulate here today. And I'm just gonna set up the first environment that's gonna be my dev environment. And um, we're going to set this up as a production environment and we're going to create a CDS database for it because um, we're going to be using solutions down the road. So solutions are a critical part of this and um, is basically essential to have a CDS set up for it. Now, this is new. Actually, you now have the ability to uh, set up your, your URL for your different uh, databases. So I'm just going to call this ALM dev, nothing out of the ordinary. And for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to install or deploy the sample apps and data. Uh, we're going to skip that for now. And then I'm going to hit save here. So that's going to set up my first environment. That's going to be my dev environment, which I have named ALM dev. Now I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and do the same thing for my QA environment. So we're going to call this one ALM QA. And that's going to be a um, production environment. And I'm going to set up a database for that as well, because um, we'll be transferring solutions between environments as a result of this process, which is mostly what you guys are interested in. So I'm going to hit next here. And um, I'm just going to call this ALM QA as well. And that's going to give us the address or URL for that environment. So I'm going to hit save here again. And uh, finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a production environment. So let's go ahead and set up ALM prod. And, um, you know, you guys can equate this to anything you have currently in your Power Platform environments to something that you'll be doing for your application lifecycle management. Whatever you call those environments, just make sure you keep track of these. And uh, this is going to be my LMM, ALM prod environment. So I'm going to hit save here again. And these now I should have three environments set up once this uh, particular one is uh, created. Uh, see, my dev environment is already ready. And uh, these two are being prepared uh, while I am actually speaking right now. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to switch over to my Azure DevOps environment. and. You can go to visualstudio.com and provision a test environment if you want. Um, I think you get up to 30 days to be able to try it out, etc. But I already have an environment here. And um, for this, we're gonna go ahead and do a couple things. Remember, you need to actually add the build tools first so you can browse the marketplace and then just look for power apps in here. You know, this will bring up the uh, Power Platform build uh, build tools. This is the one that you want. If you already have a prior version installed, keep in mind that, that those are deprecated components. So you probably just want to go ahead and get the latest version of the build tools and uh, install those in your environment. Okay, so I'm going to continue down this road here. So we're going to click here for get it free. And then it's going to request the organization that I want to install it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit install for now. 
Okay, so I'm gonna proceed to this organization. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna set up a new project and that new project is gonna be my ALM Power Apps project. Okay, and this is gonna be ALM um, components for Power Apps. Okay, so once we have that, for now I'm gonna actually set this up as private. I can leave the default, so keep in mind here if you're gonna do Git version control, well, that's what's, um, what you're gonna get here. And um, I'm gonna hit create just to continue along the lines. So this is actually prepping my project. I can then go over here for now and um, just do a refresh here. And then you will see now that I have my three environments probably fully created at this point. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go to the Power App Studio. So I'm just gonna go to make.powerapps.com. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch environments now. This is important for you to keep in mind because this is how you're gonna start out your development process. So if you are pro dev or even a citizen developer in trying to actually find a sound way of doing source code control on your deployment, of course, of your Power Apps uh, applications, you wanna basically start out with a solution. Solutions are key in the development process because that's kind of like the unit, the container of the different elements that you will be creating, whether that's an app, a flow, you know, an app that uses a AI builder, a, a flow that uses UI flow, etc. Those are the type of things that are going to be stored in that container or that solution. So I'm just going to click here on solutions and I'm going to set up a new solution for now. And what this is going to do is this is going to be my ALM uh, solution for now. Okay. The publisher, you will want to set up your own publisher. Don't rely on those existing pu publishers because uh, those are good when you're actually testing out your apps and when you're actually setting up basic stuff for testing purposes. But if you are planning on doing a professional development around Power Apps, or you even have a software development life cycle established within your organization, you will want to basically set up your own solution because solutions allow me to brand the authoring process of my applications and flows, etc. And if you are really serious about deploying stuff into the App Store, you must have your own publisher because that publisher is also going to track your company's information. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do here for this publisher is I'm going to call this, um, let's call it ALM. Oh, you know what? Let's just call this Mariano's Power Apps Factory. Okay. So there we go. That's Mariano's Power Apps Factory. And um, as such, what I want to do is I want to give it a representative uh, prefix. And that prefix basically is going to be the one that's going to, if you know this here, it's going to actually used to be creating all my entities. And um, especially if I'm doing CDS type development where I'm setting up new entities that are going to be used uh, with my apps, etc., and even my, my flows. So the option prefix, the value prefix here is a required field. I don't necessarily know how you go about setting this up. It seems to default automatically to something uh, on its own. So I would just leave that alone. But what is more important here is to fill in all your uh, company information, website, email address, somebody that can be contacted for this application that you're building, etc. If you are planning on setting up information or setting up stuff in the marketplace, there's going to be additional probably information that you need um, to, con to capture here. So for now, we're going to skip all that stuff, but I now at least have my default publisher and that publisher is going to be my own as such. So what I'm going to do then here is I'm going to choose it, the Mariano Power Apps Factory. This is going to be my first version. And um, I can also have a configuration page, etc. description uh, of the type of package that are, packages that are going to be con uh, contained in the solution. And by default, all packages are created on Manage. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Create here. And now I have my ALM solution package. This is the display name. This is the actual internal name uh, by which it's known. So keep those things in mind.
And with that, that concludes my first prerequisite setup information. If you go back over here, um, now you should have your project set up. If you have multiple developers, you can invite those to actually participate as part of the solution. The most important thing that we're going to be probably focusing here on is the repos and the pipelines. So stay tuned, follow me, uh, subscribe to my channel, like this video. That way you can keep up with all the future releases in this series. And remember, this is a three part series. So this is going to be the first video out of that three part series that shows how to implement application lifecycle management, ALM with Power Apps and the Power Platform in general. So talk to you soon.